named the number one pick of the 2016 draft and rookie of the year in the 2018 season, Ben Simmons is an NBA player who had the hopes of everyone shooting through the roof. Dominating the game from an early age, this 27-year-old Australian forward was the king of the court, with people claiming he was the future of the NBA and could be the next LeBron James. However, fast forward past his mind-numbing rookie year, and the once 76ers star quickly made a name for himself as the most hated man in Philadelphia, with some calling him one of the worst athletes to ever play the game. What happened? Where did it all go wrong? How can someone be the number one overall pick, win Rookie of the Year, make three All-Star teams, and somehow still be considered the worst contract in the NBA? How did the man touted as the future of the NBA find himself in a position where teams would rather have him out of the league altogether? How bad of a player is Ben Simmons? From an early age, Ben showed remarkable talent for the sport, going so far as to assert an unparalleled dominance in high school where he reigned supreme as the number one prospect and claimed championships and MVP trophies. Ben's journey to the NBA was nothing short of spectacular, and it's all thanks to the guidance of his father, Dave Simmons. Standing tall at 6'9", Dave dominated the professional Australian league, becoming an NBL All-Star and clinching an NBL championship with the Melbourne Tigers. He did so well that the team even retired his number 25 jersey. When videos of his 6'10 son dominating the court began to circulate, it took no time for the hype to grow. With a frame that commanded attention, Simmons possessed an arsenal of skills that set him apart. A playmaking maestro with a sky-high basketball IQ and a defensive juggernaut capable of haunting the dreams of opponents worldwide. It was no wonder people quickly compared him to LeBron James. With the world in his grasp, Ben was on his way to becoming one of the best players on the court. But then, the plot twisted in a way no one saw coming. The once famous basketball whiz started to slip. Going from being a superstar in the NBA to being talked about as a disappointment. Simmons' story got really confusing. He turned into one of those players fans either really liked or really didn't like. Even his own teammates began to question his skills. Simmons was undoubtedly one of the most dominant high school players in the internet era, scoring 28 points, grabbing 12 rebounds, dishing out 4 assists, and making 2.6 steals per game. He stood out as the best player, earning both the Naismith and Gatorade Player of the Year awards. His natural talent was unmatched at this level and he established himself as the top individual talent in the country. Despite the hype of being the next LeBron, Simmons chose a different path. He wasn't drawn to the flashier, more traditional choices like Kentucky or Duke. Instead, he opted for LSU, influenced by his godfather serving as an assistant coach for the Tigers. Even on a less competitive team, Simmons took charge, leading in three-point and free-throw shooting with impressive averages of 19, 12, and 5, along with two steals a game. Though LSU missed the NCAA tournament, Simmons made a lasting impact on the NCAA. While Brandon Ingram was definitely talented, Simmons seemed to have endless potential. He was the best transition player and had the decision-making skills of an elite point guard, all packed into a nearly seven-foot frame. And the crazy part was, as a legitimate point forward, Simmons had yet to reach his full potential. When it was time for the 2016 NBA Draft, everyone knew Ben was the guy. The 76ers, after a tough season with only 10 wins, were looking to turn things around. Joel Embiid's return was promising for the team's future, but a setback occurred as Simmons broke his foot in training camp, making him miss the entire 2016-17 season. This was the first of many injuries that would plague his career. After sitting out for a whole season, Simmons entered his rookie year with a bang. Despite doubters, he proved them wrong. His first season stats of 16 points, 8 rebounds, and 8 assists per game made him the standout rookie, and his Rookie of the Year campaign was one of the best in recent NBA history. It was evident that even at the highest level, Simmons was a cut above the rest. Teaming up with the new franchise, the Sixers' wins jumped from 28 to 52. Simmons and his teammates transformed the team from being smart to having the best young core in the NBA. But that wasn't all, as in his first NBA playoff series, Simmons dominated, 
being the best player on the court with an impressive triple-double average. However, as Simmons soared in his playoff career, some challenges appeared. Despite his immense talent, there were noticeable gaps in his game that made him vulnerable when opponents planned well against him. The journey had its ups and downs, but after just one year in the NBA, Simmons had climbed into the league's top players. However, as Simmons continued to ascend the NBA ladder, the holes in his game became more apparent. His back-to-the-basket play lacked diversity, his pick-and-roll execution left much to be desired, and the absence of a reliable jump shot became a glaring deficiency. In fact, even the late Kobe warned us about this. Well, he's gotta get a jump shot. Although there were serious problems, none of these shortcomings seemed insurmountable for a player of his caliber, and they did nothing to slow down his progress. So why does everyone now hate him? Well, you know the old saying, when the going gets tough, the tough gets going? Well, it seems Ben doesn't. As the star player has shown on multiple occasions, he does not have the mental fortitude to push a losing team. And perhaps the worst part, he could not and would not shoot to save his life. In the case of Ben Simmons, I mean, this guy's allergic to attempting jump shots, let alone making them. That's the problem. See, when Philly was on a winning streak, no one minded that Simmons wasn't a great shooter. However, things took a turn in the second round of the playoffs against Toronto. Suddenly, Ben's role shifted from being the main ball handler to becoming more of a distraction on offense. The Celtics, especially their quick-switching center Al Horford, effectively shut down Simmons' driving and passing game. Essentially, Boston left him wide open on the perimeter, challenging Ben to take shots. Unfortunately, this strategy worked perfectly. Ben seemed confused, lacked motivation, and posed no threat. The Sixers' offense struggled and was effectively dead, leading to a series loss in five games. Despite receiving tons of praise for his versatility, defensive skills, and court vision just a few weeks earlier, Simmons suddenly found himself the least liked person in Philadelphia as news outlets and fans criticized both his playing style and character, questioning how he could struggle so much with shooting. Nobody is worse than Ben Simmons. Ben Simmons might also be the weakest, most pathetic excuse for a professional athlete we have ever seen. However, some calmer voices defended Simmons, pointing out that it was still early in his career. Fast forward to the 2019 season, and Simmons still hadn't added a jump shot to his game. However, his overall performance was so impressive that the lack of a jump shot didn't seem to matter, especially after the team acquired Jimmy Butler and Tobias Harris midseason. By the end of his second year, Simmons had become an all-star, recording an impressive 22 triple-doubles. Surprisingly, he hadn't made a single three-quarter in 17 attempts. But the problem wasn't just his three-point shooting. People quickly claimed that even Shaq was a better free-throw shooter than Ben. These people would be proven right when the playoffs arrived, as Ben's weakness became more glaring than ever. Not only did his shooting not get any better, but it hit rock bottom. Throughout the playoffs, Simmons had a tough time as the charity stripe, making him the worst free throw shooter in postseason history with a dismal 34.2%, making him officially worse than legends like Wilt Chamberlain and Shaquille O'Neal. Due to his struggles, Ben's confidence vanished like Cinderella when the clock struck 12. Fearing fouls and free throws, he stopped driving to the basket, rendering him ineffective on offense. In the second round against the Hawks, Simmons didn't attempt a shot in the final quarter in five out of seven games. The lowest point came in game seven. With three minutes left and the Sixers trailing by two, Simmons passed on a wide open dunk, afraid of getting fouled. This shifted the game's momentum and the Sixers lost, with Ben scoring only 19 points in the final three games. As expected, the public criticized him again, questioning his mental toughness. However, unlike before, his teammate Joel Embiid and coach didn't come to his defense. Simmons faced severe backlash for his lack of shooting progress. If Ben Simmons ever develops any kind of jump shot whatsoever, he is LeBron James 2.0. The signs were clear and a trade seemed inevitable. Despite having four years left on his contract, Ben asked for a trade in August of 2021. The challenge now became how hard it was to get rid of him due to his diminished trade value, making it tough for the Sixers to make a deal. 
The real drama unfolded when Ben threatened to skip training camp to force a trade while the Sixers wanted him to play and boost his trade value. Ben made demands and missed training camp, which was deemed extremely disrespectful by his teammate Embiid. His absence led the 76ers to withhold the first quarter of his $32 million annual salary, and fines for missing camp and meetings amounted to a massive $1.4 million. Seeing this, Simmons took the route of claiming mental health problems, a move that was met with instant skepticism from the whole league. The Sixers, unconvinced, continued imposing fines for his absence, and by the end of 2021, Simmons had accrued over $10 million in fines in just six months, making him the most fine player in NBA history. His relationship with the Sixers went from good to bad to extremely ugly, and the once candidate for Defensive Player of the Year had turned into a playoff disappointment and eventually a player unwilling to even wear the team's jersey. But then Ben caught a break as finally on February 10, 2022, Simmons was traded to the Brooklyn Nets in exchange for James Harden. At the time, many NBA analysts saw the trade as a win-win and there was renewed hope for Simmons with Brooklyn. This was because many people saw the pairing of Embiid and Simmons as having limited spacing, as both prefer the same floor space and ball control. However, in Brooklyn, it was expected to be easier for Ben to adopt the role of a small ball center similar to Draymond Green. Ben entered the net scene with a hefty list of responsibilities, defensive prowess, rebounding, and setting up shots for star teammates KD and Kyrie. Armed with speed, rim-finishing finesse, and playmaking skills, Simmons seemed like a perfect fit. However, a curveball came his way when a herniated disc in his back benched him for the rest of the regular season. But Ben wasn't going out just like that. Fans anticipated his comeback in April, and Simmons hinted at his season debut against the Celtics in a crucial Game 4. His teammates were psyched, and fans were ready for the Ben Simmons spectacle. But just before tip-off, he changed his mind, opting out and leaving everyone scratching their heads. The Nets lost, Simmons had back surgery, and, well, the drama continued. Fast forward to the 2022-23 season kickoff, and Simmons was back in action. But it wasn't pretty. Uncomfortable and hesitant, he avoided jump shots like the plague. The team suffered from his passive play, and injuries took a toll on his defense. Yet a glimmer of hope emerged around Christmas when Simmons started to find his groove. His first triple-double as a net was against the Spurs on January 17th, signaling a potential turnaround. Then the plot thickened in February with a knee-draining operation, sidelining Simmons once again. The Nets dropped the bomb on March 24th, revealing a nerve impingement in his back, officially ending his season. With two years left on a whopping $78 million deal, Simmons, considered to have one of the worst contracts in the NBA, had only played 55% of possible games. Ben Simmons' story is quite a complicated and sorry one, as questions continue to loom about his shooting struggles, having made just five career three-pointers. Perhaps one of the strangest things about him is that the naturally right-handed player oddly shoots with his left which undoubtedly affects his touch. Despite the potential for improvement, he hasn't progressed as a shooter, which has continued to dent his confidence. The craziest part is that Simmons doesn't even need to be an elite shooter like Curry or Luka. All he had to do was manage a 30% three-point shot and a 70% free throw line performance, and he could become a force on the court without the fear of fouls. As the basketball saga of Ben Simmons continues, the question remains, Will he rise like a phoenix or fade into the shadows of what could have been? But what do you think? Is he going to make a comeback or is this the end of LeBron 2.0? Let us know in the comment section below. And while you're at it, give this video a like and subscribe for more NBA content. And until next time, keep on!